If I knew then what I know now about 3D printers, I would just get me a Fabtop Optimus P1. I mean, this 3D printer looks great for 3D printing large and small parts. It is somewhat a simple design and yet very effective and well thought out. So let's talk about the features, pros and cons of this 3D printer, as well as my reservations about it. At 55 kilograms or 121 pounds, this 3D printer should be steady and shouldn't allow for too much vibrations especially if you have a concrete floor. It is very thoughtful that it comes with wheels to be pushed around when you need to move it, because at 120 pounds, this thing can break your back. Now, even if I moved a wonton rock and many other rocks to build an homage shrine to moi, I still would not want to be moving this 3D printer around by carrying it. So looking at this 3D printer, it would fit just nicely, replacing my S5 and still look better and eliminate the table I have for my S5. So from that perspective, it would just be great. I get to get rid of my S5 and the table and get space neater. And if my stones would not be in my significant other's purse, I would just pull the trigger and get it. However, I cannot. And it is a stones issue and a space issue and a peace of mind issue. Because, you know, you get a lot of uh, flack when you do something that's uh, <laughs> not commissioned. <laughs> If I would only have the 2-3 Sapphire, I would assume it may be easier to justify this one because it would be like, oh baby, but this is so big, I can print so many cool things like that cool vase I printed for you. But then, now I have the S5 and she will be, nah uh <laughs> But with all the junk I have accumulated along with these 3D printers, then it's a moot point. The volume size, it's really impressive at 1 meter tall, that's a thousand millimeters by 600 by 600 printing base plate. So that's insane volume and this makes this 3d printer so attractive and this is the thing that impresses me the most the sheer size and the convenience of moving it around on its own wheels i just hope the wheels have brakes to eliminate any minute vibrations they might creep in when the 3d printing head is moving fast i'm also very impressed that this 3d printer is a direct drive core xy this is a splendid move at this size the bowden tube is quite long and a bowden style extruder would perhaps need a retraction of at least 20 millimeters or more. Now there might be 3D printing gurus that can tune the nuts and bolts out of this 3D printer, but I for one am not crazy about tuning the Bowden style extruders. I prefer direct extruders and in this one I think the weight of the direct extruder is negligible. What is nice is that even if it is an industrial machine, it has nice touches like drag chain and emergency stop button, USB 3D printing and SD card option all these little nice touches add to ergonomics which makes your life easier it has dual z-axis ball bearing screws sfu 1610 and with industrial 50 step motors this 3d printer boasts a one micron precision on the z-axis this is amazing and you get dual z-axis and with no wobble in the bed you should get phenomenal 3d prints the Feptop Optimus P1 comes with high standard industrial linear rails MGN12. Now I don't know what these numbers mean but I'm assuming these are like high quality ball bearing screws and linear H rails. This 3D printer is a modular 3D printer and can also do laser cutting with an optional 7 watt laser head. It even can engrave on a steel surface so that is a major point. The modular design makes it easy to assemble or take apart for longer holes and I'm planning to move and this would be just awesome. <laughs> It is also an optional enclosure housing with an optional air filter. Now this filter, I'm not sure if it is for just maintaining the temperature or can also maintain the fumes within the enclosure or filter them from getting into your room or better yet, with the proper fan, you can exhaust the fumes out of the shop or your room through a window or some sort of a exhaust system. The laser option head weighs half of a kilogram. That's one pound of laser equipment right there. I guess you can scorch the sky if you point it at the sky. And a 450 nanometer wavelength. The power is either 2 watts or 7 watts. Now I'm not sure if the 2 watt is included in the original purchase price and the 7 watt is the optional or both are optional. The description is not very specific on this matter. The motherboard is an MKS Gen 1.4 with quiet trinamic 2208 stepper motor controllers. 
The stepper motors are NEMA 17 1.2 amps, 1.8 step angle for X and Y, and NEMA 23, those are beefy, 2 amps, 1.8 step angle for the Z axis. I know the 0.9 steppers exist out there and I'm not sure why they opted for the 1.8s and probably they have a good justification for that. But all the you fancy people out there, you may want to upgrade those to a 0.9 and re-firmware the board or just get a duet. And for the direct drive gear extruder, we have a NEMA 17 0.6 amp to save weight. And probably this is a pancake extruder. The head change from 3D printer to laser, it takes only one minute. At least that's what they claim on the website. The core XY system is moved by a 10 millimeter wide GT2 belt or two of them. And I think that should be quite enough strength in 10 millimeter wide. And 10 millimeter wide, it's almost like a small car timing belt right there. So, you know, <laughs> this thing can pack a punch. I have to say this 3D printer is impressive and analyzing the 3D printer, I'm excessively tempted to get it and just face the music later. But now let's look at the cons or the nitpicks or my reservations about this and somewhat suggestions if anybody is listening. I'm not sure I'm happy with the 1.4 MKS motherboard. However, to save money, this is a good compromise. The 3D printer costs about $3,000 with shipping to the US with a $1,000 discount for the first 50 3D printers, which is going to expire in about a day. This is a limited run edition and I guess it's a trial. I think their campaign may have benefited from a strategy of of the Snapmaker 2. Those guys had a good strategy and they packed a lot of money in one month. These guys, they should have done the same thing, I think. Now, it's their choice not to do it. And I think right now there's about 17 left to be purchased. Yeah, purchased for the first batch of the 50 3D printers. One other thing that may not be a con just yet is that there is the tool changer out there. And this 3D printer seems to only have one printing head. Maybe they should come with a tool changing option for multiple filaments or just the multiple filaments option as an upgrade. If they would make a promise like that, then I think this would be so much more of an irresistible and complete solution that a lot of people would want to buy. Because this is such an investment, then I would like more options to it because the basics are very solid and satisfactory, then the rest can be done as upgradable kits. This would be a nice feature. I think they should put this on their website and I think they should start working on these features for the next batch of 50 and whatever their campaign marketing may be, I think they should adjust it a little bit. I think the power supply may be a bit underpowered at 24 volts, 16 amps. But it is a mean well, so it's about 384 watts, but I seen the Creality CR10S Pro version 2 at about 480 watts. So I think they should opt for that power supply because it would work much better for them. I mean, they may be tuned everything properly and exceptionally, but you know, you want to have a little extra there in the tank if you, you know, just to feel safe. The bed goes only to 80 degrees Celsius or 100 because the website says 100 but their brochure says 80 so I'm not sure which one is right. Could it be the website because most of the people upgrade the website or update the website much often than their brochure so if you guys see this you may want to update your brochure and that's a bit of conflicting info right there. The bed leveling is an inductive sensor for metal and it can be swapped with an optional BL touch if you want to use glass or you just want to use the BL touch. Now now, I think they might have a spare firmware or maybe pre-provisioned in the menu somehow. I'm not sure. So that would be a later update on this thing. I think the lack of a duet board or an Ethernet option or Wi-Fi for that matter may detract a bit from its uh, attraction. However, this may be mitigated with a Raspberry Pi or an upgradable kit to a multi-tool kit with a duet. I mean, I'm really pushing for this multi-tool because I think this 3D printer can beat the multi-tool changer or the tool changer that uh, E3D launched and this 3D printer has a lot of potential in my view especially if they plan to build on it it has a lot of potential I got to say that I am excessively tempted to just buy this 3D printer and deal with the consequence later I'm like mm. the more I look at it the more I want it because the specs to me looked very very good 
and right now it comes with a thousand US dollars discount. I would say that I cannot find a better deal for this type of volume. These Swedes, they know how to make quality stuff. And I guess if 3D printers were a fad back in the moon landings, then this may have made its way all the way to the moon, like Hasselblad did. And I guess when we build the first permanent lunar bases, they might be another Swedish company providing the fabricating 3D printers. But until then, I bid Mon Ami's farewell and adieu.